you remember Bonfire of the Damned, now meet Bonfire of the Damned's older brother, who also happens to be on steroids. Season's beatings, everyone. This is going to be our last gameplay for the year. We are going on Christmas vacation and I'll be back again shortly next year. In the meanwhile, we have something very special for you today. A few of you may be aware of a cross-promotion between Star Wars and Magic the Gathering called Star Wars the Gathering. It's magic, following magic rules, only with Star Wars flavor and appeal. There are a few new abilities like Space Flight, which is like super flying. Actually think of it like Shadow. All of the abilities still work within the traditional rules of magic. We thought it only fitting what with the new Star Wars coming out and all. We welcome Brian for this game, Big Deck, and this is actually his cube, but we are driving it like a big deck, since we love it so much. We're gonna have to play it a little slower than usual, since most of you probably won't be familiar with these cards. Heck, I'm not even familiar with these cards, but you see this guy? He's like a Star Wars looter. Huh. And, as much as I would love to make some cloning references, there actually aren't any for this game. I think Jar Jar Binks is even in here somewhere, but hopefully no one draws him. Let's just skip opening hands and get right into it. Brian is going first this game, and for his first turn, he throws down on some Ferocity of the Underworld as a Jund Triland. Chris goes next, and he plays a Naya Triland with Beast Riders of Onderon. Josh and Rob also play Trilands with Josh playing Unity of the Droids and Rob playing Newt Gunray. Not too much action turn one other than setting up mana bases. Turn two. Brian lands Interrogation and then casts Death Trooper, which gives all of his troopers Death Touch. Oh, and it's a zombie for some reason. Don't remember too many zombies in Star Wars, though. Chris starts his turn by landing Sith Mindseer, who has Hate, which is a new ability created for this set. Josh lands No Contest, and then casts Explore, which allows him to... Oh, you already know what Explore does. Right on. Josh draws and plays Gamorrean Prison Guard as his second land for the turn. On Rob's turn, he lands the dreaded Jar Jar Binks, as well he should, and then casts Senator Lot Dodd, which is a bit reminiscent of Grand Arbiter. At the end of Rob's turn, Chris casts Force Spark to deal one damage to Brian's zombie trooper and draw a card. Turn three. Brian lands Vapor Snag and casts Acquire Target to draw two and lose two. He attempts to put a bounty counter on Rob's Senator Lot Dodd until he's reminded that Rob's Senator doesn't send it that way. Chris lands Wookiee Ray Deleter. Josh lands Sith Marauder. And then casts Grand Moff Tarkin, which is kind of a nice creature. Kind of like a mini shield red. On Rob's upkeep, he pays two life so he doesn't lose his creature, and Josh draws a card. Rob casts Dark Trooper, which gives all of his troopers flying. Rob then does the first attack of the game by attacking Josh for two with his Senator, since Josh's creature is nuts. Josh takes two. Turn four. Brian casts Tri-Fighter, which has Space Flight, which can only be blocked by other Space Flighters, and Repair, which is like Pocrocyte's ability. On Chris's turn, he casts Force Pull, which is going to destroy Brian's Tri-Fighter, since it has Space Flight. Chris is going to scry two, and then Lightning Bolt Josh's Grand Tarkin. Josh, on his turn, unsatisfied with his cards, casts Jedi Battle Healer, which is going to gain him 3 life and even has lifelink. Life is very relevant in Big Deck. Meditate returns the creatures to owner's hand but only as a sorcery. Rob lands Gifted Initiate and then attacks Josh for two with his flyer and Brian for two with his Senator who is still totally alive. They both take two damage and post combat, Rob casts Riding Ronto who is a solid body with a disenchant monstrous ability. 
turn five. Brian lands EMP Blast, and then casts Lot Gunship, Lat Gunship, L-A-A-T Gunship. Chris lands Speeder Trooper, but casts no spells for the turn. Chris is going to have a target on his head if he doesn't get a creature on the field soon. On Josh's turn, he starts by attacking Chris, and in response, Chris shoots Brian's creature with Force Choke. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Rob asks why Chris did that to Brian's creature instead of Josh's. Why are you more choking that? This is going to make troopers, dude. Chris ends up taking two damage from the attack, and Chris again scries. Josh gains two life. Post combat, Josh casts Tri Fighter with Space Flight and Repair. On Rob's turn, he sees that Josh has the highest life and decides to knock him down by six, attacking him all out. Rob reminds the team that Josh's starship can't block since it has Space Flight. Josh then proceeds to take six. Brian then proceeds to take turn six. Brian casts Jedi Battle Mage. But I'm pretty sure he says Just Guy Battle Mage. <laughs> what do you guys think? Brian uses the ability to tap down the most powerful creature on the board at the moment, which everyone agrees is Rob's Riding Ronto. It also has Meditate, so he can return it to his hand later should he choose. Chris lands Hut Crime Lord, I guess because he didn't have a second green source, and lands an even better creature, Princess Leia which brings rebels to the party, pumps those rebels, and then uses the rebels to pump herself. A lot of rebellion and pumping going on in that one card. Rob then announces he's going after Chris. Continuing the flavor train, Josh then casts Han Solo, quite fitting that he has first strike. Also, he's gonna boost Josh's starship. Now with all the starships, Josh then surprisingly still has enough mana to cast TIE Interceptor, which I guess is useful if your TIE gets away from you. That's going to cause some loss of life. Josh goes to his El Combato phase, attacking Chris for 3 with his Tri Fighter, Brian with his Jedi Healer, and Rob with his TIE Interceptor, which got haste from Han Solo. They all immediately lose 2 life from the TIE Interceptor trigger, before damage, Rob makes his Ronto Rider monstrous and then shoots the TIE Interceptor attacking him. Strange Josh didn't attack Rob with his Grounder since all his creatures are tapped. Hmm. Chris takes 3 damage from an unblocked creature and Brian of course blocks with his creature, gaining Josh 2 life from lifelink. On Rob's turn, his 4-6 Vigilance doesn't untap, but Rob attacks Josh for two with his blue guy, whose name I forget. Turn seven. Brian casts a tri fighter of his own. Brian's cube is not singleton, by the way. On Chris's turn, he plays a land and attacks Josh for five with his princess. That is one beefy princess in Chris's corner there. On Josh's turn, he goes to combat, boosting his space fighter with Han Solo, and then attacks Rob. Rob force pulls it, destroying it and scrying two. In big deck, scrying two at instant speed right before your turn is kind of living the dream. Post calm, Josh casts Snow Trooper, giving his one trooper for a strike. On Rob's turn, Rob untaps with his biggin. Rob casts Shock Trooper, giving his two troopers plus two in the P column. Troopers are kind of like modern slivers, huh? Rob's troopers also have flying. Rob attacks Josh in the air with his 4-2 Dark Trooper, and Chris with his 4-6 Riding Ronto. Now, Chris could block here with his 3-2-2 Rebels and trade two of them for Rob's large creature, but he'll only have one remaining and his Leia will also be smaller. Chris has a very nice play when he casts Force Adept, choosing to bounce Leia and Rob's Beast. That way, Chris will get even more Rebels when he recasts Leia. Oh, and this play also gets around Rob's Senator effect. The play stands, and Josh takes 4 damage, and Chris none. Turn 8. Brian starts by landing Speeder Trooper, and asks who has the highest life total so he knows who to attack. 
Chris's and Rob's boards are looking better by the turn, though. Brian attacks Rob for three with his starship, which Rob, of course, can block. On Chris's turn, he shockingly recasts Leia, making three more rebels and making her 8-8. Eight, eight. Unfortunately, at the end of Chris's turn, Josh casts Force Push, which is going to put Leia on top of a pile for Josh to draw next turn. Josh takes his turn, drawing from the Leia pile. At least this way, Han and Leia get to be together. Josh casts Leia, making so many rebels that we ran out of tokens. Josh then goes to attack. In response, Brian flashes in that guy who almost eats the Millennium Falcon, blocking Josh's Jedi. Josh gains two life, and Chris takes five. And Rob takes two. On Rob's turn, he debates killing either Chris or Josh because he can, but instead decides to try to even the field. Brian lords his Reacher over Rob. Instead of that, Rob instead decides to build up his board state more by casting the Battle of Hoth, making two 4 4 artifact ATAT artifact creatures. Turn 9. Brian casts Jedi Instructor, which comes in and puts a plus one counter on his starship, and then attacks Josh in the air for four. Or, I mean, in the space. Rob goes on about how good the Battle of Hoth is. On Chris's turn, he casts Plo Koon, who is legendary and speeds up his meditation skills. On Josh's turn, he casts Django Fett, which does stuff with bounty counters, of course. Josh attacks Chris with the Fett Man and Rob with Han Solo so that Rob can get more guys. Not wanting Rob to win next turn, Brian casts Condemn on Han to stop Rob from getting so many troopers. Josh gains 4 life from the Condemn. Josh kills one of Chris's rebels from the Django trigger, but Chris totally forgets to take 3 damage from combat. Rob casts Gruesome Testing on his turn, which allows him to make his non-monstrous creatures monstrous. Rob bides his time for now without attacking. Turn 10. Brian attacks Rob for 4 with his unblockable starship. He then passes. Not a lot of card draw in this set. Most of the players have 1 or no cards in hand at the moment. Chris plays a land and passes. Josh casts Tri-Fighter and then wishes he still had his Han Solo. Josh then attacks Chris again with his Django Fett and Chris remembers to actually take damage this time. Josh also attacks Rob with Leia, which Rob blocks with his AT&T token and gets three more 3-1 Flying Troopers. On Rob's upkeep, Josh casts No Contest and beats Rob's last ATAT -AT over the head with his Leia. Rob gets three more troopers, but at least they can't attack this turn. Rob casts Capture, turning Brian's Exogarth into a bikini clad Princess Leia. But in response, Brian casts Wisdom of the Jedi to give the Slug plus one and protection from green. Rob then pulls the trigger and attacks everything at Brian. Brian blocks the Shock Trooper with his 8-8 Pro-Red Exogorth. And in response, Rob Monstrosities, one of the troopers that Brian isn't blocking, dealing him lethal. Brian laments that he could have prevented all damage this turn with the Wisdom of the Jedi. Turn 11, last turn of the game. Chris casts one of the sweetest cards in this set. The Battle of Geonosis, dealing 4 damage to all of Rob's and Josh's creatures, killing all of Rob's and Josh's creatures, and dealing them both 4 damage. Kristen has enough damage on board to finish them off. That's the game. It was interesting playing with a limited set. I imagine that's what playing a standard multiplayer cube would go like. Unlike our big deck, there were very little board wipes, mass draw spells, and counter spells. The one board wipe, which was amazing, was Chris's there at the end. Luckily, he drew that late game instead of being forced to land it early game. 
The game seemed to get stalemated there for a while with only either space flight guys or regular flight guys being able to get through with any damage. Seems typical that after a mass attack like the one Rob did at the end there, someone usually comes in with an even bigger attack afterwards, although in that case Rob still would have died even if he hadn't attacked. Josh has a crazy playstyle sometimes. He's a bit of a kingmaker, usually just trying to speed up the games. As far as the Star Wars part of it went, we got a pretty good spotlight on most of the mechanics and characters. The notable standouts were the planeswalkers like Yoda, Wicket, or Darth Sidious. That dude has got three emblem-making abilities. Look at that monster. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you are continuing to enjoy our clone-filled content. We'll be back next year for even more. Until then, may the odds be ever in your favor. Wait. I mean, live long and prosper. That one. And enjoy the new Star Wars movie. Alright. What does it do? Kill the score. But I'll, I'll take the two shirts. Why are you more shooting that? Because it's going to make troopers, dude. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Look, it's going to have a fucking 4 6. I can't vigilant. read that far. <laughs> I can't read that far. You're so bad. And that's an instant, too. Oh, oh, we're going to lose a Robert. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I can't read his cards, so <laughs> they can't hurt. They can't hurt me. They can't hurt.